Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Ron Tourville, and I'm here to welcome you this morning to the Anastasia System of Psychic Development, Level 1. I'd also like to take a moment to tell you just a few things about Sandy Anastasia, who will be your instructor today. And she's also the author of the Anastasia System. Sandy has been in the uh, arena of teaching New Age thought for over 30 years. She has a client list that is quite extensive and covers the entire world um, with a client, at least one client on every continent but Antarctica. It's a wonderful, wonderful situation for her. But you'll also know that Sandy has been a mentor and a teacher to some quite famous personalities in the field. Um, one of which would be, of course, John Edward, who I know you're all familiar with. Uh, Sandy's other accomplishments also include uh, writing over 30 books and authoring as many classes in New Age Thought. And what we're here today to learn is called the fundamentals, the basics. We're going to teach you how to meditate. We're going to teach you how to uh, communicate with your higher self and listen to the advice that comes from that. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Sandy Anastasi is not only one of the preeminent teachers in the field, but she's also my wife. So I would like to introduce to you, ladies and gentlemen, Sandy Anastasi. Thank you, Ron, for that lovely introduction. And uh, let me just follow it up with a real quickie on my own. Um, I don't know most of you in here, but by the end of this weekend, we are all going to know each other very, very well. There's something about working with psychic energy that draws um, a, a net of closeness between all the people who are in the group at the same time. And so all of us are going to have this, uh, wow, we're best friends, we've known each other forever kind of a feeling by the time we're at the end of this weekend. It's one of the most lovely things about working together in a group like this. I encourage people to take psychic development whether they come halfway across the world to study it with me, as I know some of you have done, whether they study it online with infinitequest.com or johnedward.net or my own site, sandyanastasi.com or any other place that you find online or in your hometown if you have a New Age bookstore or a spiritualist group that meets. I'm going to encourage everyone to take advantage of every opportunity that you have to develop your psychic ability because the new world that we are going to be living in is a psychic world. I embarked upon the process of educating people and helping them to develop their psychic abilities in 1979. I began that process, a lot of people don't know this about me, because my own psychic centers were blown open. You don't need to know the circumstances, that's not important. Basically, my guides took me off the shelf and said, Sandy, we need you. No, you are not going to push a baby carriage around East Walnut Street. You have teaching abilities that are needed, kapow. And I went from one day being a safety engineer whose entire background was scientific to the next day being so open that I was hearing your thoughts as if you were actually speaking them. That I was seeing the dimensions as being layers of thickness and density upon each other so that I was not even really sure if I was putting my foot down on something solid or something fleshy and cushy unless I looked and put it down carefully. Folks, I experienced things that were so far beyond normal human sensory experience at that point. They were beyond where I'm at right now, I need to tell you that. I shut those down. We're not meant to live in that space yet. And I was in that space for about 18 months long enough to recognize that the physical world that we are living in every day and that we think is reality is truly a very, very small, infinitesimal part of what reality really and truly is. Now, all of you know that right now as I'm giving this weekend lecture seminar that we are transiting from the Piscean Age into the Aquarian Age. 
We've been doing that for a hundred years. This is why this particular period in mankind's development is so tumultuous. We're moving from one form of energy and energy usage into another form of energy usage. Uh, can I see a show of hands as to how many of you have small children? Good. Because one of the things you're going to start to see from me are articles coming out in my newsletter on Infinite Quest, on John Edwards' site, on the web, about our psychic children. Every single child living in today's world is a almost fully psychic being relative to us. If you have small children, you've already seen this in them. You've seen them communicating with telepathy as they sit in front of the television. They're grunting or ooing or aahing every 10 minutes while they're playing a video game. And if you tune in, you're hearing them having whole conversations with each other. Even if you're not able to tune in and you watch how they're interacting together, you know they couldn't be doing that interaction unless there was more communication going on than what was coming out of their mouths. Today's children are already psychic. Guess what? We don't have to train them. We don't have to teach them. They know far more than we know. What we need to do is to protect them, to guide them, so that they have the right values, so that we can understand where they're coming from, so that we have enough foundation that we can even learn from them. And in order to do that, we have to know enough. So one of the things I'm encouraging is that everyone who has small children or small grandchildren or is in any way involved with dealing with children takes psychic development so that we can understand how to help them. And for all the rest of us who, like me, don't have children or grandchildren, I'm encouraging to take psychic development so that we can access and develop and understand our own abilities so that we can live in the world that these children are going to create. Because when they grow up, maybe another 10 or 15 years, the world that we live in is going to be a place that none of us can recognize. I hope you're hearing me. This is that important. Okay? So what you're doing in this classroom today is far more than what you may have thought you were doing when you just when you decided to come. And by the way, thank you all for coming because I love, 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 love to teach. Uh, this particular seminar being offered here in Fort Lauderdale is the first time that I have taught an entire psychic development seminar outside of my home base in Port Charlotte, Northport area of Florida. And I can't begin to tell you how big a step that is. And right now you can feel my energy shift because this is Sandy talking for a minute. Folks, I am shy. It frightens me to stand in front of people. You feel the energy shift? <laughs> my guides don't care about that. So I get to talk in front of three and 4,000 people sometimes. And that's when Sandy goes out to lunch because I can't, the Sandy that would have to stand in front of those people can't do that and speak intelligently. So my guides do it. It works very well. That's what they want to do. We're good with that. Okay. Now, that doesn't mean that, and I want you to be clear on this because this is one of my hot buttons, that doesn't mean that Sandy is possessed. And that doesn't mean that Sandy is going into trance and somebody else is taking over her body and her mind and her mouth and her vocal cords and moving it. That doesn't mean that at all. That means that Sandy steps back and translates, I'm taking this term from Abraham, the group of spirits that Esther Hicks channels. I'm translating a vibration. So Sandy is definitely still here. Sandy's doing the translation. She's just not going to offer her opinions unless she says, Sandy's saying this. Okay, you see how it works? You're going to find that I am very picky about teaching you folks right from the beginning to always be in control. Always, 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 always. As we move into this next level of being, this less dense world that's coming about, where every person you meet is going to begin to understand and utilize and access their psychic abilities, it's already happening. I do this with sales clerks all the time. You know, they're ready to hand me the red one. I say, in here, I'd rather see a blue one. They put the red one down, they get the blue one. Here, try this, we're good. 
Folks, I'm not kidding. It's constant. It never ends. It's amazing. Every single person right now is already psychic. It's just that most of them aren't consciously aware of it. By the time you leave this room on Sunday afternoon, you are going to be completely and totally aware of your psychic abilities. And you're going to know what you want to do with them. Not everyone I teach becomes a professional psychic. Just for the... That's a pretty sound. Please turn off all the phones, all the sounds in the room. <laughs> Thank you. Not everyone I teach becomes a professional psychic. Um, I would love to see a show of hands as to how many people in this room have toyed with the idea, might like to do that. Okay. Um, and just uh, for the sake of the, the camera that's not seeing, we've probably got about 50% of the people in here who have that as an aspiration. And that's absolutely wonderful because I happen to also feel that as we move into this new world that is in process of being created, that we psychics are going to be far more accepted and that there are probably new niches in the world that are going to utilize people with psychic ability that's highly trained. Um, perhaps there'll be career opportunities that aren't even yet created out there uh, because we, we are going to go from being the old time fortune teller to being the new world, let's have some advice on, advice on the latest uh, stock trends and things like that, okay? So things are already in process of changing. But I also saw about 50% of you that did not have any desire to be professional psychics. And I want to address you because quite honestly, you represent most of the people that I teach. Over this past 30 years, I've had many people walk into my classroom who were receiving information psychically at a rate that they, they couldn't shut off. They couldn't tell where it was coming from. They weren't sure if it was real. They were afraid they were going crazy. Does that feel like any of you in here? Can I see hands? Okay. They couldn't talk to their family members because their family members, well, they were crazy. And it's a very, I've been there too, folks. It's a very scary place to be. And one of the wonderful things is that there are groups like this one all over the world right now. And there are places that you can go online, thank God, and talk to other people who are having similar experiences. So folks, you know you're not crazy. And then you discover that there is a way to control it. Wow. So a whole lot of you are in this classroom today and will eventually see this video all over the world because your focus is to learn to control what you've already got and up until now has been uncontrollable. So yes, you're going to learn how to turn it off if that's what you want. You're going to learn how to turn it on. You can learn how to turn it on and off depending on when you want to allow something in and when you don't. You're going to learn to be able to tell the difference between a vibration which concerns you and a vibration which doesn't. And 90% of what you receive doesn't. That's very, very important. I wrote on my webpage, and I'm sure you've all read this, that an untrained psychic and that's all of us folks, is a danger to themselves and to everyone around them. Especially right now, as we are moving through this transitional period from that Aquarian or from that Piscean age into that Aquarian age, as we're moving through that transitional period, we are at a point where we're going through a stronger, I'm going to use a term you're maybe not familiar with yet, astral energy than we have in many, many centuries. And that stronger astral energy, that contrast means that people's emotions are carrying much more weight. They're much stronger. They're much more intense than they have been. And we're feeling them. We all feel them. Now, here's the problem that most of us face 
who are beginning to recognize our psychic abilities. When our psychism first wakes up, the easiest way for people to access their psychic ability is through their empathy. Everybody understands the term empathy? I feel your emotion as if it's my own. Well, the first thing that begins to wake up for you is your empathy, which we all have. Every human being has it. When your empathy begins to wake up, you begin to be caught in the astral tides of other people's emotion. So anyone in your environment, I'm using a new term, who is a projective empath is going to rule the roost and have everyone else in the environment who is a receptive empath on the run. And that, believe it or not, that very syndrome is what drives so many people to me to take my classes. They'll be saying, how do I turn this off? I go to work and I feel like I can't focus on my own stuff because this one needs this and this one needs this and this one needs this and it's all battering me. And I can't shut it off. Even if I shut the door, I can't shut it off. I'm sitting there trying to do my own work and I feel like I have to do theirs first. How many of you feel like that at home or at work? Mm -hmm. You are the receptive empath and those people around you are projective empaths and we're gonna teach you how to shut it off. And then they can just stand in line and wait their turn. And maybe they'll start learning to be receptive empaths too. It's interesting, it's all empathy, but you can use that empathy as a projector. I'm gonna try and make you feel all of my emotions or as a receptor, I'm gonna only feel your emotions. Okay, it's all empathy. And if you're a receptive empath, one of the things you're going to want to learn is how to be a projective empath. And if you're a projective empath, not only do you need to learn what you're doing so that people will stop running away from you, but you also have to learn how to be a receptive empath so that you can make friends that are long lasting and love you. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's just a little tiny bit of what you're going to learn. And you will have that information and how to do that by the time we're done this weekend. Okay, so back to myself. I have been training psychics for the last 30, 30 to 35 years, somewhere in there. And most of them are people who have utilized the knowledge to control their own abilities so that they can live better lives raise their children better, be happier in their relationships, be more successful at work. And the psychic work that you learn all through this whole series is going to help you to be better at every single thing you do. I have people I've trained who go into channel to figure out a computer program and they might work for IBM. So, just because you don't want to be a professional doesn't mean that this isn't going to help you in whatever it is you are doing out there. It's going to be a phenomenal tool. And of course, those of you who aspire to be professional psychics, this is going to sound egocentric. It's not. It's the truth. I once said to somebody, it is not bragging if it's true. Okay. You are in the best place to establish a foundation for everything that you want to do relative to your psychic abilities forever and ever and ever. This is the best foundation you're ever going to get anywhere. I have had many professional psychics come and take these classes and turn around afterwards and say to me, you know, Sandy, I've been doing this for all these years and I'm good at it, but I never realized I was missing so many things in the foundation now I understand why these things work and how they work, and I'm going to be so much better at it. Okay, so this is a foundation that both beginners and professionals are going to be able to take and utilize and, and run with it. I also want to tell you something else, and this is also a truism. 
the best way that you can pay me back is by becoming better than me, by becoming the best that you can be. Okay? So my aspiration is not to say, oh, wow, I taught you. My aspiration is to see, wow, look at where that person has gone. Wow. Okay, so I expect to be a stepping stone in your development. You got it? Okay. I'm not ever going to say don't study with so-and-so or don't do so-and-so. Now, in my classes, I will say, I don't believe that that's healthy. I wouldn't do it. But if you choose to do it, fine. Your business. If I say, I'm not going to study that because it doesn't work for me, doesn't mean you shouldn't explore it. Do you see? What I am going to ask is that while you're taking this six months worth of classes, that you keep your studies restricted to what we are doing here. Otherwise, your mind is going to get split with too many different differentiated bits of information. But once you step out of this program, please, 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 don't stop doing all the exercises you're going to learn daily and don't stop studying ever. Okay, I still study. Do you know that? It hasn't stopped. Every day I'm learning something new. Sometimes it's through stumbling over it and I, I say, oh, wow, I didn't know about that. I better learn. Other times it's by meeting someone with tremendous knowledge. Other times it's by interchanging ideas and concepts online. Your growth should never stop. Okay? You with me on this so far? Okay. Part of your foundation is to keep yourself clear, especially while you're learning, and get as much healing work from a healthy professional that you can during these entire classes. Now, when you first came in, what we did is we used this energy ring and uh, Slim, what was his last name? Sperling. Sperling, thank you. Developed this. He's deceased now. These are still available online. And we will be glad to give you that website if you should want to order one. Um, they're also not difficult to make. So you can, if you're handy, you can come up and take a look at this at any point and see if you want to make yourself one. It's basically a piece of uh, wire that's been wrapped by copper wire. And it's got three brass rings or, or uh, beads, one at each point of, so that energetically, this is like a triangle within a circle. Can you see that if you envision it? Um, if you imagine, if you have imaginary lines there, this becomes a, the symbol of fire, the triangle within the circle. So when I pass this over someone, starting at their crown, going down to their feet, and I do it three times, once for each level of being, mental, emotional, spiritual, what I'm actually doing is taking the energy of fire to slice any energetic connections that they might be making to people outside of this space that we're working in. Also, anything that's been going on in your mind. You know, sometimes people have, remember that, that uh, pig pen cartoon? What was the name of that peanuts? Remember the pig pen? Man, was he tapped in. You know, if you're clairvoyant, you see that garbage around people's heads when their brains get too confused. So this helps to cut that. It also helps to seal the, the heart center so that you can release emotional things that you've been going through on the outside. You see, we want you to be in this next two days clear enough that you're able to absorb everything that is delivered in this room. Okay? So, can I have my volunteer? Okay? And you stand facing me, and we're going to start above her head. And what I'm doing is I'm calling down an energy of fire. I could envision that as being Shiva, the god of fire, or in, I like to just see a flame above her head. You know, I do, I'm, I'm very visual, so I just mentally visualize that. And the first time it's severing any really hard connection she has to other people. Step back. Okay. Now I'm going to bring it up again. Step forward. Okay, and the second time, 
It's releasing her own emotional connections just in general so that she's letting go of the stresses. And step back again. And the third time, it's going to seal off those connections. Okay, now, I do want to make it very clear. Okay, step back. Thank you. How did that feel? Yeah, kind of like, I can take a deep breath now. Mm -hmm. I'm going to lay this up here, folks. So it's on the table. When we take a break, if you want to come up, look at it, play with it, work with it with somebody, you're more than welcome to. I have, upon occasion, had people that I run the ring over say, oh my God, oh my God, what just happened? Because they have such a strong connection to someone that when that connection is severed only briefly, it's almost like they feel like they lost their, their balance. So I want to make it clear that if you folks have any really strong emotional connections that you feel orphaned if you let go of them for 10 minutes, you are perfectly welcome to reestablish them. On the other hand, please take at least 10 minutes to feel how good it feels when they're not there for a few minutes, you know? Um, and I also asked you, remember at the beginning, to shut down your cell phones and anything else that um, you have running uh, during the day that would make noise, but particularly the cell phones. And I know we're going to take breaks, and this is a time when you can get in touch with the kids and you can get in touch with the boss and... You know, you're going to be so much better off if you don't do that. What do you think is going to happen if you even turn your cell phone on and just look down to see who's called? What are you doing as soon as you look to see who's called? You're reconnecting to any name you see on that cell phone. Folks, this is a very good example. We live in a cell phone world. And our, our cell phones are now giving us not just text messages, they're giving us emails. So we can stay connected to Coles. <laughs> okay? <laughs> we can stay connected to anyone and everyone, you know? It's absolutely amazing that if you are clairvoyant, and clairvoyant means I see energy, okay? If you're clairvoyant and you saw somebody walking down the street, you could literally see strings coming off of them that cover their whole body because of all of the people and the things that they are thinking of. All I have to do is think, visualize you, imagine you, worry about you. Oh, I forgot to do. How many times a day do you do that with how many different people and situations? Every single one of those is a link. No wonder we get into bed at night and we can't sleep. See what we're doing to ourselves? This is what I was talking about by we are in that state of development right now where we are at the most unconsciously psychic as a society that we have ever been. And it's weighing us down. And it's making us crazy. And we need to learn how to control it. We need to learn how to let in only what we choose. Which is why classes like this are so very, very important. Very, very important. You are going to learn how to do things energetically. And one place to start is by turning your cell phone off. Turn it off when you go to sleep at night. Don't wake up in the middle of the night and look at it. I know I do that. And my husband rolls over and says, I hate this. He rolls over and says, put that thing down. And I'm, I thought you were asleep. <laughs> He says, I was until you woke me by looking at it. Do you see the energetic connections? And I bet you get the same thing at home too, don't you? Energetic connections. Start seeing the world as energetic connections. And guess what? You will no longer have trouble with, with relationships either. Because you'll recognize that when your mate or partner decides to pick a fight with you, it's because their energy's been bled somewhere else. Now they're looking for yours. See it as energy. When you see things as energy, it's totally different than when you see them as personal interactions. When you see it as a personal interaction, you cannot help but take it personally. And so you react personally. 
and then you have a fight. When you see it as energetic connections, nothing is personal. It's all just energy. And you can change it like that by changing your focus, by changing your attitude. Is this making sense? Yeah, I thought so. Okay, we're going to do a nice little exercise that is something which is going to, we've already cleared. We've used the ring to clear each other coming in. So everybody's let go of their attachments. We've all turned off our cell phones. Every time we come into this room, you are going to come into a space that's already cleared and protected. That's why this room feels so crystal clear. It's already been cleared and protected before you even walked in the door. I will have a different form, a different tool to clear you with every single time because I want you to learn a whole bunch of different tools. Today we use the ring. Tomorrow we're going to learn how to use smudge. Okay? Every single time we meet, we will have a different tool. And that way you're going to learn that no matter where you are, no matter what you're doing, there's always a way of clearing yourself and clearing your space. Okay? Right now, you're not worrying about clearing the space. You're in a cleared space. Before you leave tomorrow, you're going to learn how to clear your home and clear your space too. With every single thing you learn in this entire series, from this weekend right through to the last weekend in the series, I will not teach you something that I don't teach you the right way of doing it to be safe and also whatever protective techniques are required so that you can do whatever you're doing in total safety. Okay, that's part of everything. I want to build it in right from the beginning. Kind of like when you're teaching driver's ed, the first thing you do is teach the kid to put the seatbelt on. That's the way it is in this classroom, okay? So you won't even realize half the time you're protecting yourself because everything you're doing is going to be coming just so naturally it's part of what you're doing, okay? I don't ever want to have any of my students run the risk out there on the street of being a sitting duck for somebody who just wants to play with their head, okay? And that happens, unfortunately, it does happen but not to my students, it doesn't. So there, okay? Okay, so we're gonna learn a quickie little exercise which is just going to get everybody at ease. This is a progressive relaxation and we're gonna do long form this time over the course of the weekend. We're gonna learn variations of it where it will get shorter and shorter depending on how we're using it. This is the long form. It's gonna take us 10 to 15 minutes to do this and I want you to pay attention. I know all of you who've been involved in yoga or martial arts or different healing techniques have learned how to do progressive relaxations. I'd like you to try mine. If yours works better for you, then go back to yours, but try mine for now. I have found um, over the years, I've done many, many different forms myself. I found this one works the best. And I do want to confess that it is loosely based upon the same progressive relaxation that Robert Monroe of the Monroe Institute of Applied Sciences developed, and it works. And why does it work? Because it's going to relax the head and the mind first. And then it's going to give the control to the head and the mind to relax everything else. And that's why it works, because your mind really likes to be in control. You know? So we teach it relaxation, and then we put it in charge of relaxing everything else, and wow. I get my best progressive relaxations this way. But again, if something else works better for you, use yours. Okay, so here's what you're going to do when you're at home and you're going to do a progressive relaxation or a meditation. The first thing you're going to want to do is to take your shoes off. You don't want to have your shoes on, particularly if you're wearing sneakers. You don't want to have anything that's uh, synthetic or rubber that's an insulator beneath your feet. Your feet are going to be there for grounding. When you breathe, you're going to want to be able to have a completely free ability to breathe. So if you'll notice, I can actually expand my stomach, contract my stomach freely in, in this outfit. You're going to want to undo or loosen anything that you might have around your waist that's tight so that you can breathe freely, nothing constricting. At home, you would do best to always find the same seat in your house that you're going to meditate in at the same time each day. 
you're, you're going to want to turn off the telephone, put the dog out, put the bird out, the cat out, make sure the kids are off to school. If that's not possible, you might want to get up in the middle of the night to meditate. Your meditation will always be much more effective when there are not mind waves clogging up the airwaves around you. So, midnight, dawn, noon, dusk, when the tides of the planet are changing, are good times for meditation. During the middle of the night, or when other people are at work, you're going to find any work that you do is easiest at those times. By working in the same place each day, you'll build up an energy around that place for your own meditation, and also for your, if you're going to just do a progressive relaxation, or even, even your psychic work. If you do it in the same place, your body and your mind will be ready for it each time you do it. So your feet are going to be flat on the floor. In yoga, they often will put themselves cross-legged or Indian style, and that's acceptable because the root of the spine is still uh, ground, the grounding point. But what we don't want to see are crossed legs or crossed ankles or crossed arms because that will short-circuit your energy. We want your tongue to not be pushed up against the back of your teeth, because if it's pushed right up against the back of your teeth, you are going to fall asleep. So you're going to want your tongue to be just where the palate, there's the, there's the ridge behind your teeth, and there's where the palate starts to go up into the soft palate, and you're going to want your tongue just behind where the soft palate starts to go up, and that will help to keep you awake. The right side of the brain connects to the left side of the body, left side of the brain to the right side of the body, and the transition happens right here, just below the nose. So when you put your tongue on the soft palate, you're putting your tongue at the exact place it needs to be to create a closed circuit of energy while you're doing your meditation or your progressive relaxation. So it's going to make everything much easier and it will stop you from falling asleep when you do this. So, you can put your hands in your lap, palm down, or you can keep your hands palm up if that's more comfortable for you. I like mine palm down. You want your back not to be this straight back that's uncomfortable. You want the back to be curled in the bottom, relaxed. You want a straight back. You don't want to slump in your chair, but you want the back to be relaxed, not so straight that you are uncomfortable while you're sitting. And also, when you're at home, it might be a good idea to get out a blanket or an afghan because uh, your body temperature when you meditate does tend to go up. So when you're done meditating, when you come out of it, you can get very cold very easily. So a blanket is a good idea too. Okay, let's begin. We are going to do just a progressive relaxation. And we're going to do the long form of this so that you really understand exactly what it is. And... We're going to move from that progressive relaxation into a very brief meditation, just to give you a flavor of what meditation is like. So, begin with me now, please. Close your eyes. And we're going to take three deep breaths, or I like to call them great breaths, to release any tension you may be carrying. So, tongue is on the soft palate, remember. Breathing in through your nose as deeply as you can. Comfortably breathe. And then exhale through either your nose or your mouth and visualize all of the tension, any excess energy pouring out of you down into the floor and grounding. Release. And again, breathing in through the nose, expanding through first the chest, then the ribs, then the stomach, and then exhaling and pulling the stomach in, the ribs in, the chest in, and one more on your own. Now let's begin our progressive relaxation. One, focus the attention of your mind on the fine muscles beneath your hair all over your scalp. 
Feel them relax and let go. Now focus your attention on the muscles of your forehead. Squinch your forehead up and then relax it. Focus your attention on your eyes. Squinch them and then relax them. Make a mean face and then relax the muscles of your entire face. Feel the muscles of your eyes relax and the muscles that move your eyes relax. And let all of the muscles around your mouth relax. Swallow to loosen the muscles of your throat. Let your head drop first to your left and then forward and circle around to your right shoulder and then back and all the way back to the left shoulder and then back to center and now the other direction let your head drop forward and move over the right shoulder circle to the back as you breathe in and forward as you breathe out back to the right shoulder and then back to center to loosen the muscles of your neck. Two, let all of that relaxation that you have collected in your head and your face and your neck flow inwards like a soft pink cloud moving into your mind and brain, smoothing your brain, relaxing your mind, teaching your mind what relaxation is. Breathe in that relaxation into your mind and brain. Take a moment for your brain to understand and fully experience this feeling of relaxation Three, now that your mind understands what it is to be fully relaxed, your mind sends a wave of relaxed energy down through your entire body, down through your neck into your chest, down your arms into your hands and your fingers, down from your chest into your lower body, past your buttocks, into your legs, all the way down to your feet. Four, look with your mind at the muscles, tendons, and ligaments of both feet. With your mind, Tell all of these to relax, to let go, to sleep. Tell them with your mind to relax, to let go, and to sleep. Relax. Let go. Sleep. Five. Look with your mind at the muscles, tendons, and ligaments of your legs. From your hip joint all the way down past your knees to your ankles. With your mind, tell both legs. Relax. Let go. Sleep. Tell them to relax. Let go. And sleep. Your mind tells all of the muscles of your legs to relax, to let go, and to sleep.
Six, look with your mind at the muscles and at the organs of your lower torso. Look at the muscles of your buttocks. Look at your intestines, your kidneys, your genitalia, your liver, pancreas. And with your mind, tell all of these, relax, let go, sleep, tell them to relax, let go, and sleep. Your mind says, relax, let go, and sleep. Seven, look with your mind at the muscles and the organs of your upper body, your heart, your lungs, your diaphragm, your stomach. With your mind, tell all of these muscles and organs to relax, to let go, to sleep. Let your mind tell these to relax, to let go, and to sleep. Relax, let go, sleep. Eight, look with your mind at your back, at the muscles and ligaments and tendons of your back from the base of your skull to the base of your spine. Tell all of these all of these muscles, tendons, and ligaments along your spine to relax, to let go, to sleep. Tell them all to relax, to let go, and sleep. Relax, let go. Sleep. Now look with your mind, nine, at your arms, your forearms, your wrists, your hands, and your fingers. And with your mind, tell the muscles, the tendons, the ligaments of all of these. Relax, let go, sleep. Relax, let go, sleep. Ten, you have entered the ten state. Your mind is clear and alert, totally awake, and your body is deeply asleep and fully relaxed. Ten. This is the ten state of mind awake, body asleep. Ten. Any time you need to enter this state, all you need do is count yourself from 1 to 10, visualizing each part of the body, and you can re-enter this state at will. 10, 10, 10. Now let your mind be clear and your body stay relaxed. As you let your breathing be even and regular, breathing in and out.
And now I'm going to count you back from 10 to 1. 10 being the state of total relaxation, mind awake, body asleep. 1 being the place of normal waking beta consciousness. 10, 9, 8. Wiggle your fingers and your toes. 7, take a deep breath and release it. 6, roll your shoulders, first one, then the other, then together. 5, twist on your chair, first one direction, then the other. 4, give a big stretch. 3, 2, and 1. Open your eyes, wake up. Come back to this time, this place. And folks, how did that feel? Okay. When I get quiet as I did this time, I often see colors. So, um, and I enjoy that show. So is that something, I mean, that helps me focus? It probably or? is. Yes. That's, uh, that's what, when one of the questions that had been asked on our, our little mini break there, um, someone had said, you know, when I'm, or just before the break, actually, when, when I'm doing my progressive relaxation or meditation, what happens, you know, if my mind wanders, should I be thinking of other things? Seeing, just seeing colors or just hearing a tone, people would do either or or both. That probably is coming from your higher self, actually helping you to maintain focus. Okay. Um, when I talk about don't let your mind wander during those things, it's, you know, don't, don't follow back to that argument with mom when you were three. Don't let yourself get tied up in the work that you're preparing for, for work tomorrow. Don't let your mind go out to that. Now, someone else said, how do I stop that from happening? And I want you all to understand there is nothing wrong with you because your mind wandered during meditation. It doesn't make you less than. In fact, it says you're just like everybody else, okay? Um, being able to keep your mind still and centered and relaxed is something which takes a lot of practice because your mind has to get to the point where it enjoys the sensation of being relaxed before it will allow itself to stay relaxed. And the only way it'll get to that point is through practice. So when I'm in meditation, if I suddenly realize that I have, you know, followed myself back to that conversation with someone yesterday, I don't get mad at myself. I don't say, oh, damn, there's the end of my conversation. I'm, I just can't make this happen anymore. I'm not going to be able to meditate. Okay, I don't do that. What I do is I just say, oh, my mind drifted. I pull my attention back, take a deep breath, let it go, release, and still my mind. Okay, when I first started meditating, I used to make a game of it. When my mind managed to drag my attention off, I'd say, score one for the mind. When I, higher self, brought my attention back to still, score one for me. And eventually the score one's for me, where the drifting simply didn't happen, far, far outweighed the score ones for the, for the mind, okay? Some people like to meditate on a candle flame. Some people like to meditate on a simple object. Um, I play with the breath. As I breathe in, I'll see an arc of energy. As I breathe out, I see the other side of the circle. And there's the breath flow. And if I get bored with the circle in the air in front of me with my eyes closed, I usually keep my eyes closed, then I'll convert it to a figure eight. Okay. Um, and what does that do? It gives the mind something to occupy it. It's sort of like a smoker trying to quit smoking. You chew gum. Okay. It's really the same thing. Uh, if you know, in a way you might think of your mind as being addicted to thought 
And folks, I'm going to take that a step further. Unfortunately, in our society right now, most of our minds are not just addicted to thought, we're addicted to drama. That means thought powered by emotion. Okay? What I do, I'm going to share this with you. When someone around me enters a drama, and there's always someone, if you want to be addicted to drama, and our minds are addicted to drama, okay? Because your mind might be addicted to drama, you're attracted to the drama queens, be they male, female, or, or, or canine, or fem, you know, feline. You're going to be addicted to the drama in life. Well, if you are that drama addict, you are going to be surrounded by drama queens, and you are half of that equation. Please remember that. You're half. Don't complain about having a drama queen in your life, or king, because you're the one who's allowed it, okay? So when I find myself attracting the drama queens, I look at Sandy and I say, why is my mind going back into that addictive pattern of wanting to get into emotional chaos? I take that deep breath, put a wall down between me, literally visualize a wall between me and that drama queen, and I step back from the whole situation. Can you visualize that? Yeah. And whether it's on the telephone, whether it's the person sitting across from me at the dinner table, whether it's a person online in the supermarket who's busy yelling at the cash register person, I separate myself from that and I do it with a visual wall, a mental step back, even if I can't take a physical one, and I take a deep breath and go, See that? Okay. When I used to work a cash register in a new age door, and you think that new age doors attract only people who are enlightened and wonderful? No, they attract tons of people who are needy. Okay. Which doesn't mean those aren't nice people. Okay. We're all needy at some point. But what I used to do standing at the desk behind the cash register is I would visually see an energy wall that came up from the floor behind me and came down like a tire in front of me into the floor. See that? I'm giving you a very important visualization here for dealing with any kind of mental drama, okay? This pattern, this flow, anything which comes at me is going into the floor. And it's not bothering the other person in the least. They can do whatever they want with their energy. They can dump till their heart's content. It's not going to bother me because it's never coming through, okay? She just learned a little psychic self-defense tip there that's a, a lifesaver sometimes, okay? And you can do that when you're sitting down. You can do that when you're driving your car. It's literally a tire of energy, okay? Comes from the back down to the front, okay? Okay, that was a very good question. And see where all these questions lead? Important information. Okay, why is what we did just so important? Progressive relaxation must be done before meditation. Initially, remember we had, just now we had about 15 minutes of progressive relaxation and about 30 seconds of meditation. We're going to practice that all through the weekend. And when you go home every day, I would like you to practice that at least one time during the day. You can choose your time. The easiest times to meditate are dawn, noon, dusk, and midnight, because those are the periods where the, literally the tides of the earth energy is changing, and there's less chaos in the energy around us.